Good morning. Good morning, those watching online to our Sunday school class. We've been, uh, last week we started this series in the book of Revelation uh, regarding the seven churches of Revelation. And the reason why we're doing that is simply because I've received uh, many questions regarding is this the end times? Uh, with everything we're seeing, is this some of the prophecy that's been explained and talked about? And, and I, I don't know the answer to that question 100%. Obviously, um, we do know in the end times during the tribulation period, there is a one world government led by this superhero, uh, charismatic leader. And he's assisted by this religious leader of some kind. And, and definitely there is what we would call a global government. Okay, and uh, with this pandemic, it seems to be like it is global and so far countries and continents and entire sectors, most of the entire world has uh, talking about stopping this global spread. So it's almost as if in a way we're being set up for this one world government and one world leader and and so lots and lots of discussion about the end times and and i thought instead of speculating that we needed to go to the book of revelation and look a little bit at the end times and and we're just going to start with these seven churches i don't know where we where we will go from there but if you recall correctly that uh the first church is ephesus and the church at ephesus is it's told to us that are, they are very hardworking in ministry. They are very dedicated in ministry, but they had lost their first love. And obviously, we as a church need to evaluate ourselves. Uh, is that us? Uh, do we work hard in ministry, but are we still focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, our first love? That is the most important um, now, just so you remember, there's a couple views on uh, these seven churches. Some folks say, and, and I would agree with this, that these were seven actual churches that existed at one time. Uh, but then others say, no, they, they did exist, but they are actually uh, representative of churches of all time. All, everywhere you go, there's churches like Ephesus. Everywhere you go, there's churches like Smyrna, the one we're looking at today. And still other people say, no, they are representative churches of different time periods. Like the church is Ephesus, they say, was the first church kind of just after uh, the time of the apostles from about uh, 70 to 170 A.D. And then Smyrna about 170 to 300 and something and, and on and on and on. And, and some people say that right now we're in the time of the Church of Philadelphia uh, or possibly Laodicea. That's the representative of the majority of churches. So these theories are very interesting if you want to dig into that and look into that a little bit more. There's lots and lots of resources about the representations of these these churches but uh, what we do know is that these were actual churches and that's what we kind of need to concentrate on since the other stuff we're not 100 percent sure about so today is uh, the church of smyrna and it is actually a very short passage in comparison to the ephesian church we're going to start in revelation chapter 2 verse Eight. It says, Unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. We're going to talk a little bit about this, but I do want to mention that I was 
doing a little bit of watching online on YouTube and there's a great video series by uh, Dr. Joel Stoll on the seven churches of Revelation uh, on YouTube. And you can, you can find it very quickly. I think um, Our Daily Bread uh, sponsored it or put it out. In fact, I was watching it this morning and he was pointing out a few interesting things, things that I had, had remembered in my studies like 10 days. Uh, he claims that is a Greek uh, like phrase that means very soon. So it may not have actually been a literal 10 days. It may be just very soon. Uh, and then it'll be a quick uh, persecution. It'll be over with. Another interesting thing that he said, he said, I will give you the crown of life. Uh, he said that uh, Smyrna was known as the city of the crown, uh, that they had uh, some rock outcroppings that looked like a crown, and that was their symbol, crown. And, and so when people from that area are reading this, oh, the crown of life, it would have really... Uh, perked up in their heads. So uh, some interesting things if you want to watch that. I I thought if we could have set up a computer and the screen we could have just watched it this morning but uh, we'll, I'll just let you folks know if you want to watch it. It's there available on YouTube. But uh, Smyrna, look there at verse 8 and 9 um, and 10. We can see that they are a church that we probably can't relate to. Now, if you think about Ephesus, you can think about times in your lives where you got so wrapped up in, in, in a ministry and, and you forgot about Jesus Christ. I think we can relate to that church, but it's going to be difficult to relate to the Smyrna church because um, we don't really see that much persecution. I mean, when we start reading about the, the persecution that was happening in the city of Smyrna, that was happening in those ancient times, uh, it's hard for us to relate to it. Yeah, you can point to uh, in California, they are shutting down churches. In, in Canada, if a pastor speaks out against homosexuality, they're, they're persecuted. You know, we can, we can pull a few ideas, and, and we could go to like Nigeria and say, oh, these Christians are under attack and churches burned down. They're, they're a little bit closer to what was happening in Smyrna. It's hard for us to relate because um, we don't necessarily face that type of persecution. But, but look, um, this persecution, what, what happens um, uh, to these people uh, it ends up purifying the church, uh, even though they're suffering, and, and they, they become, if you become faithful unto death, I'm going to give you the crown of life. So these believers were, were persecuted, and they were tested, and, and they were purified, and it sort of weeded out the hypocrites, and it, and it weeded out the, exposed the false believers. Because um, why does persecution tend to weed out the the false believers. When we say that phrase, what do we mean by that? If you're not a true believer, you're not going to go through all that. Right, Why right. The persecution you're going to see is then you're Right. Why go through the persecution? I'm not even really a believer. You know, that's that's one of the, the reasons why we know that Christ really did rise from the dead. That Christ really did ascend into heaven because all the apostles were severely persecuted. Okay? If that was all a lie, if they had lied, remember how the Jewish people uh, said, oh no, he was stolen. And they paid off the Roman soldiers to say that they were overpowered and the body was stolen. If that's what really happened, why would all the apostles go through the persecution? I mean, they would say, nah, it was a lie. So yes, persecution tends to uh, weed out the hypocrites a little bit. And why go through it if, if this is all fake? Um, so verse 8. Uh, to the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things, says the first and the last, who is dead and come to life. So this is from Jesus. This message to this church is from Jesus because we know that Christ is the first and the last. You, we know that Jesus always is and always will be. Jesus is above time and space. So we know this is a message from Christ. Uh, but look at look at this end, uh, the last little part. He's the first and the last who was dead 
and came to life. So we know Christ was the first and last, meaning he's God, but he's also dead and came to life, and that speaks towards his humanity. There's this great uh, theological truth how Christ is 100% God and 100% human, and this verse right there uh, talks about that. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 through 11, the church in Smyrna. So Christ, uh, in the same breath, is God, and he was also human. He was dead and came to life. And these are just the facts of who Christ is and what uh, Christ has done. And then it starts off with this very familiar phrase that is told to every one of these churches. Verse 9, it says, I know your works, right? Um, reminding them that God sees all, right? We went over that last week when we were talking about the, the church in Ephesus. God sees them all, uh, and that is a fact. God is in control, and, and that's something that sometimes we need to be reminded of still today, is that God's in control. God is in control. A lot of different things going on around this world. A lot of people calling me uh, regarding the election. What do you think about the election? And ultimately, I can only say, God is in control, right? Uh, that's what he's telling this persecuted church. I know your works. Uh, God is in control. What a message to a persecuted church. I see, I, I know your works, I see your works. And uh, then it tar starts going into this uh, persecution that was happening. And we kind of got to go back to the background a little bit of Smyrna. Uh, Smyrna is a very Roman city. They are a strong ally of Rome. Um, they had, um, there were several large cities. They were a city of about 100,000 people, and back then that was pretty large. And there were several large cities that were sort of putting in a bid for this new Roman temple uh, from whichever emperor it was. And they won the bid. I mean, these guys were tied to Rome. They worshipped the emperor. And it's about 40 miles from Ephesus, that, that first city we looked at. And uh, they still have a, a Bible-believing church, a Christ-fearing church there still yet today. And it's, uh, today it's the Turkish city of Izmir. And because of all these, this, this emperor worship, this worship of Rome, um, that caused a lot of pressure. When it says, I know your works, tribulation. The Greek word for tribulation there is literally pressure. They are under pressure because there's all these people there. There's this temple to this Roman emperor there and there's other gods, temples there and they're putting under them this pressure. In fact, right during this time frame, the emperor Domitian required sacrifices. Like, you had to sacrifice to him. He was the God. And there was all this pressure, and especially in this city. Maybe in the outlying provinces and things, you wouldn't have to make a sacrifice to the emperor, but in Smyrna, you'd have to. It would have been law. It would have been required. So there was this pressure on the church to make sacrifices to worship this uh, Roman emperor. And on top of that... Um, because of this, they're in, they're in poverty, right? If you don't worship the emperor, do you don't do what we say? What are we going to do? We're going to take your stuff. So there, there's confiscation going on of houses and lands and, and things like this. People are losing their jobs because they're they're standing up for Christ. They're not worshiping the emperor. And and then on top of that, there's this blasphemy of those that say they're Jews and they're not. And, and what are those people called? I mean, this is pretty serious, right? here. They're called the synagogue of Satan. And, and history tells us that they think that there was organized attacks on the Church of Christ, not only by these Roman-worshipping people, uh, but by the Jews. History says uh, one of the very famous 
martyrs, Polycarp, I don't know if you've ever heard that name before, they say he was probably one of the pastors after um, John and Paul had been in this area. Polycarp was in the city of Smyrna, and they say it was these Jews that were behind it. They caught and captured Polycarp, and uh, so that's why they're called the synagogue of Satan, because they're not believers. These people are, are striving after satanic things, and uh, so they are in poverty um, because of what's going on, abject poverty, their own nothing. They can't live by their own means because of what's going on. And it's, it's really sad uh, that what has happened to these people in the persecution there. But verse 10, what does Christ remind them? Do not fear, right? Do not fear any of those things which you may suffer or are about to suffer, indicating what? More, more persecution's coming. I know you've already suffered a lot, but even more is coming. In fact, there's going to be 10 days of persecution. This is a very specific uh, time listed. There's hardly any other places in the scripture like this where, hey, you're going to have this limited amount of persecution for about 10 days, 10 days, okay? Um, brief, but it's going to be very intense. And during this time, what is going to happen? You're going to be tested, but do what? Verse 10, be faithful. Be faithful. So that, that message would still be true for us still today if we were ever to face persecution. Uh, we would be kind of like this church of, of Smyrna and we would need to be faithful and true, stand true to Christ no matter what. All right? I think maybe we can almost relate to this just a little bit. Stand true to Christ no matter what the government would tell us to do. Right? As a church... As believers, stand faithful and be faithful and true. And when we do that, uh, what happens? Verse 11. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, the end of verse 10. We can get the, the crown of life. We can get this reward. And, and when we are faithful and true, when we stand true to Christ, indicating that our salvation is genuine, that that is real, we end up in heaven and we get the crown of life. The reward of all genuine Christians. And uh, verse 11, we, we see this. We're going to see this many, many times. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So once again, heed the word of God. You know, I think the, the indication as we read this is you may die of persecution on earth. But if you believe the word of God, heed the word of God, obey the word of God, you can only die once. I think I read that somewhere a long time ago. You may, you may die of persecution on the earth, but you cannot die a second time if you have that crown of life. You only can die once. And uh, that, that's an incredible uh, thing. And it was, this was great encouragement for those men and women there at this church that were going to be facing this persecution. Uh, Polycarp, I already mentioned him, uh, when he was killed, legend has it that he said, 86 years have I served the Lord and he never wronged me. How then can I blaspheme my king and my savior? Uh, apparently as they were killing him, they were requiring him to be uh, blaspheming Christ to disown the Lord and torturing him. Legend has it that they were um, burning him at the stake and normally they would tie him to the stake. And he said, I don't need those. I'm, I'm not going to move. He was an older man. He wasn't going to get out of there. And they were requiring him as they were burning, deny Christ, deny Christ. And he wouldn't do it. And somebody went up into the flames and stabbed him and said, deny Christ. And he still wouldn't do it. And he said, 86 years 
I have done this. And I'm not going to blaspheme the Lord now because um, he was tested. He was tested. He had faced the tri tribulation and the pressure all his life. And verse 10, he was faithful unto death. It's kind of a fascinating story when you kind of realize that Polycarp, this record of, of somebody being faithful to death, was from this church of Smyrna. And um, it's, it's just kind of interesting. And like I said at the beginning, we it's going to be tough for us to relate to uh, this church of Smyrna because we really don't understand persecution. We've, we've never really faced it like, like they did. You know? Some people may wonder, well, you know, we didn't really face persecution. The church of Ephesus didn't face persecution. Why did Smyrna face the persecution? Why, why was that? You know, well, the truth is, is at any time we could face uh, that type of persecution. But I've got a bunch of verses for us to look up, just to uh, think about why different people at different times has gone through suffering and persecution. I found four different reasons why churches uh, may or may not go through persecution. If you would find these with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Why might a church or a person or, or anybody, why might somebody go through persecution or tribulation or suffering in some way? Um, lots of different people suffer different things in life, and sometimes it seems like they go from one bout of suffering to the next, 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 until finally you say, why? Well, there's a few reasons possibly why. Number one reason I have written down here is discipline. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. It says, For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are ch chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. A very interesting passage indicating to me that sometimes we go through suffering for disciplinary reasons. Like the Lord is not just trying to cleanse the church of hypocrites like we talked about initially there with Smyrna. He might be trying to cleanse our hearts so that we are not condemned with the world. Very interesting phrase there. Uh, so one of the reasons why sometimes we may possibly be suffering is because discipline. The Lord is trying to get uh, cleanse our hearts and get rid of something in our lives. Another reason is if you turn over a few pages to 2 Corinthians 12. Second Corinthians 12 verse 7. This is the example of the Apostle Paul, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, uh, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. So Paul was suffering with something, a lot of speculation of what the thorn in the flesh was, um, to prevent something in his life, to prevent pride. So it, it could be possible that we go through a, a pressure situation, a tribulation, a suffering of some kind to prevent uh, pride in our life, to prevent some kind of a sin. You know, it, it could be a blessing from the Lord in some way that we don't go down a path that we would have if life would have been all hunky-dory. So uh, sometimes we suffer because of disciplinary reasons or because of a preventative. Uh, a couple more reasons, if you would find Romans chapter 5.
Romans 5, starting in verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given us. So sometimes we go through tribulation because... It's going to produce in us perseverance and perseverance, character and character, hope and, and on and on and on. Uh, so sometimes we go through uh, a suffering situation because it's going to teach us to obey God just a little bit better. Um, I'm sure there's lots of examples in scriptures that we could point to. Well, this person went through that to, to the Lord teach them to obey him. And maybe you can even point to an example in your past. You know, um, Rose isn't probably old enough to have any examples in her past. She's so young, 27. But uh, some of us that are a little bit older, we can actually point to times in our past where we look back and we think, I wonder if that was to teach me to obey God. Just a little bit better. I know I've heard testimonies like that. Uh, from people, uh, from pastors. One of my good friends, he's not a pastor, um, but he told a story about how he went through a heart attack. And he can point back to that day, and he knows exactly what the Lord taught him to obey him better in a certain area. And it was just a fascinating testimony. Uh, when he when he gave that testimony, when I heard it the first time, I was like, I was like, Lord, what a powerful testimony. In fact, um, occasionally, sometimes people ask me, oh, I need a speaker that's not a pastor. And I, I recommend that guy. Such a powerful testimony. How, how he could point to that exact heart attack about the Lord taking him through that tribulation to teach him to obey God just a little bit better. You know, perseverance produced character and character hope and, and, and on and on. Uh, and that just a great thing. I don't know if you can do that in your life, point back to a, a time of suffering where God was teaching you something. The last reason why sometimes people suffer, if you would go forward to the book of Acts, just a few pages to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Verse 16, if you would find verse 16, Acts 9, 16. It says, For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, Christ says you may suffer sometimes, occasionally, to build up either your testimony for Christ or to build up the testimony of Christ. <coughs> It might just be that you are suffering to further the kingdom of God in some way. And uh, ultimately, God will get the glory for that. So, um, you know, this church in, in Smyrna was probably wondering why uh, we, we face persecutions. We were in poverty and we have the synagogue of Satan, these Jewish people attacking us. And then on top of that, there was this 10 days of persecution. And on top of that, the, the Romans are requiring that we sacrifice to the emperor. And, and why are we going through all this suffering? Well, it, for some of the people, it could have been discipline. God was trying to cleanse them of their hearts. For some of them, it might have been preventative. Preventing pride, preventing some other sin. Maybe somebody just needed to be taught to obey God a little bit better. And lastly, maybe it was just to further the gospel of Christ, the testimony of Christ, like, like Acts 9.16. And, and maybe there's some other reasons, maybe this week you can think of, uh, with some scripture verses, why might I go through suffering? You know, think about that. So the church at Smyrna, uh, I'd encourage you once again, we are done really early if, unless I figure out something else here, but uh, I think I talked too fast this morning is what the deal was, but I'd encourage you, 
to go on YouTube. It's uh, Dr. Joe Stoll, um, Our Daily Bread, as they're about 25 minute long. Uh, I've watched one of them, the one on Smyrna, and it was really worthwhile. They have some really neat, he's right there in Smyrna, and it has some of the mo most well-preserved uh, ancient ruins in the whole world. In fact, in my studies this week, I, I typed in the seven churches of Revelation, and it goes to the country of Turkey as a website called Go Turkey. I, it sounded funny to me. Go Turkey, what is this? And then it was the, the country of Turkey trying to encourage Christians and people uh, to come visit these seven cities. You know, it's a tourism website, and it had a lot of pictures, especially of Smyrna and some, some incredible ancient ruins. And some, it looks like they, they tried to do some repairs over the years, but um, fascinating. If you're definitely into history, uh, watch some of these videos. Is there anything else anybody that's here knows about Smyrna, the Church of Smyrna, that maybe I didn't speak out and talk about? Um, anybody have anything? Wow. We covered it all. Well, we're, we'll wrap it up with a word of prayer and we'll get ready for the next service. Uh, Father God, we're thankful for these uh, letters to the seven churches and I, I pray that we would be diligent in our studies, that we would uh, seek your face, ask the Holy Spirit to teach us uh, from your word, that we wouldn't neglect uh, these lessons, these considerations, these applications, or regarding uh, losing our first love, whether it be the example of the church in Ex Ephesus or uh, the, the persecuted church in Smyrna. May we recall uh, why sometimes we go through persecutions you know, with these other scriptures. And Lord, I, I just pray for my friends that are watching here today that would like to be here but can't for various reasons. I, I pray that you give them uh, a blessing there at home today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.